Oh my, today's lecture is all about the male sexual organs, and we're talking about the penis, the erection, the foreskin. What is the difference between a circumcised penis and an uncircumcised penis? Well, externally, the most noticeable parts of the male sexual anatomy are the penis and the scrotum, or scrotal sac, which contains the testes. So let's review the penis itself. The penis, usually called a phallus, prick, Cock Johnson, and many other slang terms, too numerous for me to list right now. It serves important functions in sexual pleasure, reproduction, and elimination of body waste by urination. Tubular organ with an end or tip called glands. The opening at the end of the glands is the midis or urethral opening through which urine and sperm pass. The main part of the penis is called the shaft. The raised ridge at the edge of the glands is called the corona or the crown. While the entire penis is sensitive to sexual stimulation, the corona and the rest of the glands are the most sexually explicit region of the male anatomy. Internally, the penis contains three long cylinders of spongy tissue running parallel to the urethra, which is the pathway through which semen and urine pass. As the names suggest, these bodies are tissues filled with many spaces and cavities, like a sponge. They are richly supplied with blood vessels and nerves. In the flaccid, which is the unaroused, not erect state, they contain little blood. Erection occurs when they become filled with blood or engorged and expand, making the penis stiff. Erection is purely a vascular phenomenon. That is, it results entirely from blood flow. Some people believe that the penis of the human male contains a bone. This is not true at all. Although in some other species, for example, dogs, the penis does contain a bone which aids in intromission, which is the insertion of the penis into the vagina. In human males, however, there is none. The skin of the penis usually is hairless and is arranged in loose folds, permitting expansion during erection. The foreskin is an additional layer of skin that forms a sheath-like covering over the glands. It may be present or absent in a adult males, depending on whether they have been circumcised. Under the foreskin are small glands called the Tyson's glands that produce a substance called smigna, which is cheesy in texture. The foreskin is easily retractable. This being extremely important for proper hygiene, if the foreskin is not pulled back and the glands washed thoroughly, the smigma may accumulate, producing an unpleasant smell. Now, circumcision refers to the surgical cutting away or removal of the foreskin. Circumcision is practiced in many parts of the world and when parents so choose is done to boys in the United States within a few days after birth. Circumcision may be done for cultural and religious reasons. 
circumcision has been a part of Jewish religions practiced for thousands of years. It symbolizes the covenant between God and the Jewish people and is done on the eighth day after birth, according to spiritual teaching. Circumcision is also common in Muslim cultures too. In some cultures, circumcision is done at puberty as an initiation ritual or rite de passage. The ability of the young boy to stand in pain may be seen as proof of manhood. In the 1980s, an anti-circumcision movement began gaining momentum in the United States. Its proponents argued that circumcision does not always have a health benefit and does entail some health risk as well as psychological trauma. According to this view, circumcision has nothing more than cruel humiliation to the individual. Reflecting the growth of controversy about circumcision, only 59% of infant boys were circumcised in the United States in 1986, compared with 90% in 1970. New evidence accumulated, though, and in 2012, the American Academy of Pediatrics declared that there are medical benefits and advantages to circumcision that outweighed any potential risks. The evidence indicates, for example, that uncircumcised male babies are 11 times more likely to get urinary tract infections. There is also evidence that uncircumcised men have a higher risk of infection with HIV and AIDS virus. It is thought that the foreskin can harbor HIV and other viruses. In a five-nation study, including Spain, Colombia, Brazil, Thailand, and the Philippines, circumcised men showed lower rates of HPV infection. HPV is the virus that causes genital warts and predisposes women to cervical cancer. In this same study, the monogamous women partners of the circumcised men had lower rates of cervical cancer. Circumcision also reduces the risk of prostate cancer. In a randomized control trial in Kenya and Uganda, adult men who wanted to be circumcised were circumcised or not in the control group. Over the next two years, the circumcised men had half the rate of HIV infection of the uncircumcised men. The trial was actually halted over ethical concerns about withholding circumcision from those who wanted it. Other arguments have focused on whether the circumcised or the uncircumcised men receives more pleasure from sexual intercourse. In fact, Masters and Johnson's in 1966 found that there is really no difference in excitability between the circumcised and the uncircumcised penis. A common form across most of Polynesia is supercision, also known as superincision, which involves making a slit the length of the foreskin on top with the foreskin otherwise remaining intact. With subincision, which is common in some tribes in Central Australia, a slit is made on the lower side of the penis along the entire length and the depth of the urethra. Urine is then excreted at the base rather than at the tip of the penis. To say the least, the penis has been the focus of quite a lot of attention throughout history.
Not surprisingly, the male genitals were often seen as symbols of fertility and thus were worshipped for their powers of procreativity. In ancient Greece, phallic worship centered the Priapus, the son of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and also the god of fertility and wine. In contemporary American society, phallic concern often focuses on the size of the penis. While there is considerably variation in the length of the penis from one man to the next, the average penis is generally somewhere between 7 centimeters, which is about 3 inches long, and 10 centimeters, which is about 4 inches in length. When flaccid, which is not erected, there is a tendency for the small penis to grow grow more erection than the one that starts out large. Let me repeat this research. The average penis generally somewhere between 7 centimeters, which is about 3 inches long, and 10 centimeters, which is about 4 inches long in length, when flaccid, which is not erect, there is a tendency for the small penis to grow more in erection than one that starts out large. As a result, there is little correlation between the length of the penis when flaccid and its length when erect. As the saying goes, erection is the great equalizer. <laughs> Okay, and in case you were wondering, the average erect penis is about 13 centimeters, which is about 5 inches long, and 11 to 12 centimeters, which is about 4.5 inches in circumference. Moving on to the scrotum, the other major external genital structure in males is the scrotum. This is a loose pouch of skin lightly covered with hair that contains the testes, or what people call the balls or nuts in slang. The testes themselves are considered part of the internal genitals. So, let's review it. The testes are the gonads, or reproductive glands, of the male, which are like the ovaries to the female. Like the ovaries, they serve two major functions, to manufacture germ cells, which is the sperm, and sex hormones, in particular particular to testosterone. Both testes are about the same size, although the left one usually hangs lower than the right one. One of the clever tricks that the scrotum and testes can perform, as any man will testify, is to move up close to the body or down away from it. These changes are brought about mainly by changes in temperature, although emotional factors may also produce them. So, if a man plunges into a cold lake, the scrotum will shrivel and move close to the body. If the man is working in an extremely hot place, the scrotum will hang down and away from the body. This mechanism is important because the testes should remain at a fairly consistent temperature, lightly lower than normal body temperature. This consistency of temperature is necessary to protect the sperm, which may be injured by extremes of temperature. Thus, if the air is cold, the testes move closer to the body to maintain warmth. But if the air is too hot, they move away from the body to keep it cool. Many people believe that taking hot baths, wearing tight athletic supporters, or having a high fever can cause infertility. 
Indeed, in some countries, the men take long, hot baths as a method of contraception. Such a practice has some basis in biological fact because sperm can be damaged by heat. As a method of contraception, this practice has not been particularly effective. However, men with problems of infertility can sometimes cure them by getting out of their tight jockey straps and jockey shorts. In regards to the male sexual organs, externally, the most noticeable parts of the male sexual anatomy are the penis and the scrotum, or scrotal sac, which contains the testes. In my next lecture, we will talk about the female sexual organs and the different parts. Ooh.